everyone. Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. I'm Mike Riley, the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. This is part three of our three-part series on business coverage tools. Uh, today we're going to work with a tool called Google Flourish to visualize some business data. Um, before we get started, I wanted to remind you about journalisttoolbox.org presented by the Society of Professional Journalists. Journalisttoolbox.org houses uh, thousands of links that are helpful to journalists, training videos, we have a newsletter, many other things that are helpful. Uh, we have business resources right here at the top, which are of interest to you because we're uh, you're watching a video on business tools for journalists. Uh, there's uh, several topics here, everything from retail at the holidays to uh, investigating, investigating companies, which uh, we covered in uh, our second uh, video in the training series. Um, so this is part three, uh, and uh, to do our exercise, uh, you'll need to open up our uh, business tools handout link, and it's highlighted right here, bit.ly slash Google Finance Tools. You also can uh, hit pause on this video uh, and open that up, or you can go to the description in this YouTube video. It has the link to this handout right there. So take a second to open up the handout and then restart the video. Welcome back. Um, this is our handout with our three-part series here. Part one, we covered Google Finance and how to scrape data out of Google Finance. Um, part two was backgrounding companies and charities using things like the SEC Edgar database, uh, Violation Tracker, GuideStar, uh, how to investigate private companies and startups, uh, Part three uh, is creating a Google Flourish graphic. Um, so to do this, you need to set up a free account on Google Flourish, flourish.studio. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video and set up the free account there, and then we'll get started on the exercise. Okay, welcome back. By now you should have a Google Flourish account. Uh, you can get started for free here, or hit sign up here. Uh, set up the free account. The paid version you don't need. That's for developers and uh, uh, you know uh, people that are doing uh, uh, more uh, back-end development work. But to create the graphics uh, in Google Flourish, uh, all you need is a spreadsheet. Um, I'll hit sign in here and get logged in. Um, this is a very interesting tool. Google bought this five years ago from a company called Kiln, K-I-L-N. And when they first bought it from them, it was I had a handful of bar charts, line charts, pie charts, things like that. Uh, you know, it wasn't all that fancy, and there were already other tools that were on the market that did, you know, did these graphics and more. Things like uh, Data Wrapper or Infogram or Vengage. Uh, so, you know, not that many people were using the tool at the uh, start, but they soon learned that developers were going in here and developing really cool animated charts and graphics. Uh, that you could build with nothing more than a spreadsheet. So, uh, you know, used to be you had to know JavaScript and, you know, Python and, uh, you know, a bunch of different software to create an animated graphic. Uh, a graphic like this one that I'm showing you, this little sports graphic, you can click on the data tab and all you need is a spreadsheet with the player's name, a link to their photo, and their data. You know, you could do this with business graphics as well, which we're going to do here in just a minute. In Flourish, if you hit the blue button that says New Visualization, it will take you in and hear all of the templates. Um, you can scroll down here. There are maps, Corepleth maps, uh, uh, scatter plot charts up here, uh, other mapping tools uh, over in here, heat maps, uh, all kinds of really cool things. There's the animated line chart that I just showed you for the uh, baseball chart. Uh, animated bar chart race. This is a good one for COVID data. You can break down state by state, country by country COVID data. If you want to show how your state legislature voted on something, there's the parliament chart. If you want to put your business data up as a searchable database, you just load the spreadsheet in here and boom, you've got a searchable database. So a lot of versatile templates in here that run off of nothing more uh, than a spreadsheet. Um, so on our handout, we have an exercise uh, where I'm giving you some data to download. Uh, and this is uh, data that came from the Chicago Sun-Times. I did a training with them not long ago. Uh, and they gave me this data uh, to share with all of you. So it's real data, so you can publish this. 
And uh, just click on this link here under step one, and it will take you to a Google Drive folder. And inside here, uh, there's a lot of different data sets that we use, and you're uh, free to uh, help yourself to any of this data. But the one we're gonna use for our purposes is right here, the third one from the bottom, Top Tech Company Racial Breakdown 2019 Grouped Column Chart. Uh, so to uh, download this, you just highlight it, and you go here uh, to the upper right-hand corner and hit the Download button. And it will drop into your Downloads folder. Just to give you a quick snapshot of what this looks like, it's a very simple chart. It's a broke down, breakdown of percentage, white, Asian, Latino, and black. Uh, for Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Groupon, Twitter, and Instagram. So here in Chicago, you know, we have a pretty good size uh, Google and Office. Groupon's based here. We've got a, a fairly good size Facebook office in here as well. Um, so, you know, this is of interest to Chicago readers. You know, most readers, I would think, would be interested because, you know, the tech companies haven't done a real strong job of, uh, of uh, hiring a diverse uh, staff. Um, so you can download that data. Once you have it downloaded, uh, you can go in and you can uh, select what template uh, you want to use. Um, so there's all kinds of different ones in here, you know, column chart, uh, you know, column chart with a little menu that pops up, stacked column chart if you're showing a breakdown uh, of, uh, uh, you know, uh, data within a, a group. Uh, you could do uh, this chart in, is a grouped uh, stacked column chart. Uh, we're going to actually do ours as a column chart grouped, which is right up here in the upper right, second one over from the far right side. Um, upper right hand corner, column chart group. So double click on it. And the interesting thing about Google Flourish templates is anytime you open the template, it's got dummy data already in there. So if you're ever curious, well, how do I set up my spreadsheet so it will work with this uh, template? All you have to do is click on this little data tab right here at the top. And it will give you, oh, well, I just need this, the year on, in this column, and then my data flowing under each piece here. And if you'll notice, this data that we pulled came from a variety of sources we'll get into in a minute. Company name, and then the data flows vertically uh, 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 under each column, and then horizontally you see it by each company. So it matches up perfectly with how this is set up. To upload your spreadsheet that you just downloaded into this software, hit the Upload Data button. Go into your Downloads folder or your desktop, wherever you happen to save uh, your spreadsheets. Select that data set. It'll take CSV files, comma separated values, XLSX, certain shape files for maps as well. Uh, it'll ask you, you know, which sheet uh, of data, because there are five tabs open in it. And just leave it to Sheet 1 and hit Continue and import. And in will come your data. Anything highlighted in pink and purple is what will appear in the chart. Uh, let's say the data came in and, and it only went to column D. And we just had these three ethnicities and we didn't have column E covered. You just have to go over here and change it. You know, usually it'll sync up and, and pull all the data in. But uh, you know, in case it doesn't, you can always adjust them over here. Your label, which is your company, goes here. Click over on Preview, and your group bar chart has begun to take shape. We've got our company names down here, then our percentages here. Uh, we could do it as you know as other types of charts. If we don't like our group bar chart, we can go down here and select uh, uh, you know the stack chart by company. We could uh, do it uh, you know pie charts for each of the companies uh, would work as well. Um, if you don't want to do it as a single chart, you can select grid of charts here uh, and it will group them uh, together so you can kind of see uh, you know, group by uh, race rather than by company. You can see, see it a little, presented a little bit differently, but single chart I think uh, tells the story quite well. It gives you a lot of controls and filters over here on the uh, flyout menus. You can hit colors, select a different color panel if you want to. Um, you know, anything you want uh, uh, to adjust, you know, you can pretty much adjust in these little flyouts. If I want to make uh, the pop-up menus go away, I can select pop-ups and turn them off. Now they won't pop up. If I want to get rid of my legend, uh, I can, you know, uh, get rid of the legend uh, by just going in here and turning that off and the legend goes away. But I'm, you know, I'm going to leave it on. Auto or on, we'll, we'll leave it on. 
any graphic, you should also have what's called a header and a footer. Your header is typically a headline and maybe a sentence or two of description. Your footer uh, can be a footnote, uh, as well as the link to the source of the data, where it came from, uh, as well as your credit should be at the, in the footer. And those are added down here. So if you click on this little flyout menu that says header, you'll see that it gives you a title, subhead, and text. Sometimes you'll just do a title and text uh, and skip the subhead, you know, but uh, you can center it, flush right, flush left. Uh, you can also click here and change styles if you want to add, you know, uh, a different color, make it a different color or bold face. You know, you can adjust uh, a lot of the settings for the fonts and things like that. So let's go back into our exercise. And in the exercise, if you scroll down here, we've already done steps, you know, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, here's our headline. Um, I've given you the headline to, to type in uh, off this exercise. And I'm going to paste it up here in the upper left hand corner for my title. And I'm also going to put it in where it says title for my header. Um, this title up here in the upper left is a working title. Um, it, uh, uh, it just kind of uh, hangs out here up at the top of the graphic when you publish it. But you should always have the headline in the graphic itself as well. I'm going to bold face this and I'm going to change it to a little different color. Color pickers right down here. You could go in and uh, always change it back if you want. And now I've got a nice bold headline up there. So I go back then to step nine and in my footer, uh, it says compiled from by company reports. So I want to put that in the credit area, which is right down here that says source. There's no real link since it came from multiple country reports. You might hit return on there and it might skip around a little bit. Um, uh, if it takes you back to the data set, just click data tab one time and then back to preview. It's been a little clunky uh, that way recently. In the notes section, you want to add graphic in your name and then this little uh, uh, thing here, this little uh, explanation about the data here. That'll go in the no foot footnote area. And under your credit, it'll say graphic by, and then your name. So you'll have to add that in. It's very important. It's a little different graphic because it came from a variety of reports. So you wanna uh, definitely go in here and, and make sure everybody's uh, credited in here. Normally you're just gonna have maybe have one source and a link to it. The link would go here if it was just, you know, came from one organization. So I'll put my credit in. Hit return. And now we've got our footnote. And once you have your graphic in working order like this, you can go up here to the upper right where it says export and publish. It'll ask you three times to export the Publish button. The minute this turns green, you're now live on the web. If you've made a mistake, you can always unpublish and keep editing, uh, but it won't be on the live web. You can download it as a static image. It's a you know, pretty good resolution. Uh, you can do accelerated or JavaScript, accelerated mobile pages, or iframe embed code, depending on your CMS's wishes. You also get a link to it up here if you have a nice link to it. This is what it looks like on the live web. My working title and my little credit up here. Uh, and then, you know, you always want to have your credit uh, down in here as well in your footnotes. So there you have it. That's how you build a business graphic uh, in Google Flourish. Uh, spend some time working with Google Flourish, practice this exercise, and you'll get good at it very, very quickly. And that concludes our three-part series on business coverage tools. Make sure you've watched all three videos. Uh, once they're all three published, uh, we're going to have them in a uh, YouTube playlist. Uh, so be sure to check that out and you can watch them in order. Uh, and in about 45 minutes, be up to speed on uh, good digital tools uh, for telling business stories. We hope you enjoyed it. Take care.